everybody. It is uh, wonderful that you've joined us today with our th on our third day of our Passion Week. It is such a privilege for us as Word and Life to bring these services to you to the comfort of your own homes. And I uh, believe uh, that uh, we are not on holiday and uh, we're working hard behind the scenes to bring these sermons to you. And we trust God that these, uh, these messages will go around the world changing people's lives and that Jesus may be exalted. While you are sitting there, uh, let's uh, fix our hearts on Jesus and close our eyes in prayer. Our Father that art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father God, we thank you for your kingdom. And your word says we must first seek the kingdom of God and your righteousness. And all these things shall be added on. Father, we pray that your kingdom will come. We pray that your kingdom will come in these difficult circumstances that we're living under. And But we do still believe that God is in control. Doesn't matter what. You work, out, you work all things for the good, for those who love you and those who are called. Thank you, Jesus, for your promises that is yea and amen in Jesus Christ. We want to bless the people listening today. We want to bless the people that's logged in today to our live stream in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, uh, like I said, we are on our third day of Passion Week, where we go through the events that happened prior to Jesus' crucifixion. We are on the Wednesday uh, now, and we are going to tell you about a story that is recorded in four, all four of the Gospels. So it must be a very important story that is recorded by all four of the gospel writers. And that is the betrayal of Jesus by Judas Iscariot. A lot of people might think, but Judas, why was he chosen to be condemned? And this leaves a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths because we tend to bring it into ourselves. And we say, but what, what to me? What it may, Did God maybe chose me to be condemned one day? But you see, the Bible tells us in John 3, 17, that God did not send His Son into this world to condemn this world, but to save this world. What a wonderful promise we get in John 3, 17. But what happened to Judas? What happened that he had that change of mind to betray Jesus? Because Judas was one of the twelve. Jesus was one of the guys. Jesus was a disciple, chosen disciple. He stuck with Jesus. He was under Jesus' teachings. He was saw uh, the miracles. He heard the parables. He saw Jesus loving sinners. He, he saw Jesus doing great and wonderful things. See, the problem is, and this is the problem with a lot of us today, is... Judas' wrong perception of who Jesus was. And we find this story just prior to, Jesus, to Judas betraying Jesus. We find the story of a woman entering the house of Simon the Leaper with an alabaster jar of very, very expensive oil. And she breaks this jar and she pours out this jar over Jesus' feet to anoint him. And what happened is, the people present there, the disciples, they rebuked her. They were so angry because they believed that the money that they could, have, they could have obtained from this oil could have helped a lot of poor people. Now John records this as Judas being very angry and rebuking this, this woman, Mary Magdalene. Let me read to you what Jesus said. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them anytime you want. But you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured pure perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. I tell you the truth. Wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done, will also be told in memory of her. Now the scripture after that is our main scripture for this for today. And in verse 10 of Mark 14, it says, Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. 
They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money. So he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. See, the story begins where the, the Pharisees and uh, the Pharisees, the Pharisees and the chief priests are looking for a way to kill Jesus. And I think they saw when Judas rebuked this woman, they saw that this man's heart was not really with Jesus. And they saw in him we might find somebody to deliver him to us so that we can hand him over to be killed. Now, a lot of people might think that Judas did this because of greed. But I don't agree because Judas only betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, which in today's money, it's only four months of wages, which is not really the jackpot, if I could say it like that. And even so, Judas, Judas even went back to the chief priest to give the money back when he felt guilty. But you see, Judas still betrayed Jesus. Why did he do that? Why did he have the change of heart? See, a lot of scholars believe that Judas was a zealot. And the zealots, they wanted to overthrow the Romans who were occupying Israel at that time. And they wanted to overthrow the Romans by war, by violence. And they saw the, uh, the Messiah coming in this time. They saw the, prophets, the, 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 the Messiah that were prophesied over coming at this particular time to deliver Israel from their captors, the Romans. So Judas... When he heard that Jesus was going to die, his whole world crumbled. He must have thought, I'm serving this guy. This guy will come with a sword and he will come with an army to defeat the Romans that is, that is suppressing us. And here this man is telling everybody he's going to die. And you see what happened to Judas is he did not guard his heart. The Bible tells us out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It says the good man brings forth good things and the evil man brings forth evil things. And in Proverbs 4.23, he tells us to guard our hearts with all diligence for out of our hearts flows the issues of life. You see, Judas did not guard his heart. Are you guarding your heart today? Have you ever been betrayed by somebody Maybe in a business deal, maybe you have went through a divorce, maybe a friend or a work colleague. Have you ever been betrayed? I want to tell you today, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of your heart flows the issues of life. We can choose what flows out of our hearts by guarding our hearts. You see, Judas did not know who Jesus was. Jesus knew exactly who Judas was. Jesus knew Judas was a lost sinner in need of a savior. But Judas did not know that Jesus was the savior of this world. What, what fascinates me about this whole story is that Judas and Peter betray Jesus. Do you remember the story where Peter denied Jesus three times? But the difference was that Peter repented. And I believe today with my whole heart, if Judas could come to a place where he could guard his heart and he could repent and he could turn to Jesus, maybe today we would also have a book called Judas. I know there's a book called Judas, but he wasn't Judas Iscariot. But Judas maybe could have had a book to himself. Maybe one of the Gospels could have been attributed to Judas. But because Judas did not guard his heart. And the outflow of that was the betrayal of the Son of God, Jesus. And when it happened so, Jesus told him that make it quick. Whatever you do, just make it quick. Because the sooner Jesus could die, the sooner this world could have been saved. The sooner he could have been resurrected to life so that you and I can have life and life in abundance. In a place where his precious blood guarantees our salvation eternity. Wow, isn't that something to hold on to? Isn't that a hope we can grab today? To understand that somebody else's blood, the precious blood of Jesus, the precious blood of God flowed at Calvary so that you and I can have life and life in abundance. I believe today that wherever you sit today, that this blood 
washes away all your unrighteousness if you choose so. You see, a lot of people think that Judas were chosen to be condemned. But I am of the opinion that Judas chose with his own free will to be in that position. Because the disciples didn't know it was going to be Judas. Even John asked Jesus, who is it going to be? They did not even suspect Judas. But you see, when Judas took offense by the lady that was anointing Jesus' feet, he hardened his heart towards Jesus. And that can be crucial in our relationship with Jesus. So friends, if you have hardened your heart today, just give it to Jesus. In these difficult times that we're in, just give your heart to Jesus. Say, God, make my heart a heart of flesh in Jesus' name. Let us close with prayer. Father God, we want to honor you and praise you for the precious blood of Jesus as we move into Easter weekend, the most important weekend, Father, of a Christian's life. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. We want to thank you for every drop of blood that was shed at Calvary so that we might have life and life abundantly. Father God, I thank you and I pray for this weekend right across the world, God, that people will turn to Jesus, that people will give their hearts back to Jesus. And I pray, Lord, for those who have hardened their hearts like Judas, that they will turn away from their sin and turn to you, Lord, because, Father... You sent Jesus to this world, not to condemn this world, but to save this world. And thank you, Jesus, that we have hope. And that hope will never make us ashamed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for tuning in with us. Remember our, uh, our Easter services. And uh, we look forward to having you with us on Easter. God bless you.